But now if you actually start thinking about it, fire is really something completely different. Earth, water and air are all forms of matter. They are made up of millions and millions and millions of atoms collected together. But fire isn't matter at all. It's a visible, tangible side effect of matter changing form. It's one part of a chemical reaction and the chemical reaction is what we call as burning. Fire can actually destroy your house and all of your possession in less than an hour. It can reduce an entire forest to a pile of ash and charred wood. It is also a terrifying weapon with nearly unlimited destructive power. Fire, in fact, kills more people every year than any other force of nature. But at the same time, fire is extraordinarily helpful. It gave humans the first form of portable light and heat. It also gave us the ability to cook food, forge metal tools, form pottery, harden bricks and drive power plants. There are a few things that have done as much harm to humanity as fire and a few things that have done as much good as fire has done to humanity. It is certainly one of the most important forces in human history. But the question still remains, what exactly is fire? Let's answer that question now. Fire is the result of a chemical combustion reaction, typically a reaction between oxygen in the atmosphere and some sort of a fuel. When I talk about fuel, anything that burns is actually fuel. You can take wood, for example or gasoline, or petrol, or natural gas. All of these ingredients which actually burn is what we call as fuel. So basically, it's a reaction between oxygen in the air and a fuel. Of course, the wood and the gasoline don't spontaneously catch fire or just because they're surrounded by oxygen. For combustion reaction to take place, the fuel has to be heated to a higher temperature than it naturally exists. And this temperature to which you will need to raise the fuel so that it starts to burn has a technical name to it. And that technical name is called the ignition temperature. Now, if you have fuel and you're able to heat this fuel to the ignition temperature, and there is oxygen which is present in the atmosphere at the same time, then the fuel and the oxygen will combine or will react to form something called as fire. And that is what we will actually be exploring through the chapter now. To understand all of this, let's take an example of a wood fire. When I say wood fire, I'm just basically talking about wood which is catching fire. So here is the sequence of events that typically happen when a wood get, catches fire. Something heats the wood to a very high temperature. This could be a number of things that can, that can basically heat the wood to that temperature. It could be focused light. It could be friction. It could be something else that is already burning. And one thing that I would want you to note is fire is what makes fire. That is, you, you can have fire created only if you have a basic fire created. And that is something that we will explore in the later part of the chapter. So the wood basically needs to get heated to its ignition temperature. When the wood reaches, say, to about 260 degrees Celsius, the heat decomposes some of the material that make up the wood. The decomposed material is released as a, a volatile gas. Typically, a compound of hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. When the gas is hot enough, the compound molecules break apart and the atoms recombine with oxygen to form water, carbon dioxide and other products. The gases that rise through the air make up the flame. Carbon atoms rising in the flame emit light as they heat up. The heat of the flame keeps the fuel at the ignition temperature. So it continues to burn as long as there is fuel and oxygen. So now if I basically need to summarize everything that happened, you've taken wood and you've heated it up by some source. It could be light, it could be friction, it could be another, another fire, uh, another fire which basically heated it up. When you heat up the wood, what happened was the material in the wood decomposed and the decomposed material released some volatile gases. These volatile gases basically mix or react with oxygen that is present and that generates a lot of heat and that is what you basically see as fire. A side effect of these chemical reactions is, like I told you, a lot of heat. The fact that the chemical reaction in the fire generates a lot of new heat is what sustains the fire. As they heat up, 
the rising carbon atoms as well as other atoms in the material start to emit light this heat produces light effect is what you call as incandescence that's the technical name for heat producing light incandescence and it is the same kind of thing that creates light in the light bulb it is what causes the visible flame flame color varies depending on what you're burning and how hot it is 